another waistcoat, another video, another Bruce in the same shirt. But hey, we're not after your fashion sense, we're after your sales knowledge. And I've heard you say that 74% of professional salespeople suck at selling. So if that's the case, what hope do people like us who aren't trained in sales, who just run a business, and we're great at our business, but we're not good at sales, what hope do we have and why do they suck? Okay, 74% of salespeople suck um, is a statement that was made by Dave Curlin, who is the chief executive of the Objective Management Group, OMG. Okay. They do assessments on salespeople. Okay. They work with over three and a half thousand companies uh, in several different countries and they have analysed over two million salespeople's behavioural strategies, selling skills, etc. Okay. And that was their summary. 74% of salespeople suck. Forrester Research did some similar work um, similar analysis and they came up with pretty much exactly the same figure on eight different points. So that's almost three quarters of the sales force, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. 74% of professional salespeople suck and 26% are okay. Some of them are very good indeed. But what about you? How can you outperform these people? So we need to look at the 26% and see what they're doing. No, we don't need no. to look at those. No, no. If you're better than the 74%, yeah. you're going to be in the 26% bracket anyway. And I'm going to make it so easy for you. Because okay. selling is easy. Selling's the oldest profession. Okay. You know, some say there's an older one, but that's the subdivision of sales. <laughs> okay. okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. Selling is not about battering people with information about you, your business, your products, your service, uh, high pressure selling, because nobody's interested. Because yeah. all that will happen if you do that, I'm just going to go like that. Yeah. People are only interested in what can you do for me. Okay. Everything else goes straight over their head. I wrote a definition of sales 25 years ago. It took me a long time to write it because I take a long time to get things dead right. Okay. And I've never been able to improve on it. And it goes like this. Selling is exposing companies and individuals to problems they may never knew they had and to opportunities they may never knew existed and showing them how your idea, product or service can help them solve the problems and exploit the opportunities and helping them to buy. Right. So let's break That's no we, pressure, is so it? So can we break that down? So of course we can. What the first bit is? First part is exposing companies and individuals to problems they maybe never knew they had, or never uh, knew existed. Okay, so let's try and get an example. I'm going to use video. People maybe do not realise that if they don't have video on their website, they're missing out. Their, their website's not going to get ranked as high as other websites. So that's a problem. If your website's not going to get ranked, it's a problem. And they might not have been aware of that. So is that a good example? That's a very good example. And there's different aspects to that. Okay. Because they may have been aware, mm -hmm. but the people they went out to were far too expensive and they really didn't think they could afford it okay. and didn't know that maybe there was more competitive pricing out there. Options, or yeah. they just didn't know at all. Yeah because nobody had told them. Okay. People had phoned them up and said, you know, we, we do videos, we make videos. Yeah. Uh, we're the most wonderful people in the world. They didn't solve a problem. They didn't know what the benefit of having that video was. Precisely. Okay, so that's the first part, second part. And the second part is exposing them to opportunities they maybe never knew existed, okay. which is not quite so important. Mm -hmm. The most important thing, which I'm gonna dwell on for another couple of minutes, please, okay. is the problems okay. and there's an exercise that you need to go through and the exercise is to get a sheet of paper maybe several sheets of paper mm -hmm. and either by yourself or if you have colleagues brainstorm brainstorm every single challenge problem that you have ever been able to solve for any past customer and mm -hmm. any present customer okay. and don't stop until you've got every single one down okay. 
Then you can do the same with opportunities. Right. And then you, you write down the questions that you will ask people to expose those problems okay. and opportunities. Okay, so I've done, some, I've done a bit of this in the past, so I'm okay. going to rewind and see if I can remember one of the questions and then we can dig down to what the problem was I thought at the beginning. Okay. Do you find yourself spending a lot of your time explaining to other businesses what you do and they don't seem to get it very quickly? It takes you a long time to educate potential clients, potential customers on the value of what you give. That's a very good question. Okay. You could add to that mm -hmm. um, and you'd need another question to get that across. It could be something like, do you think some of the people you are trying to sell to mm -hmm. are concerned that you are selling to them and that they might take a lot more notice if they could sit back and watch a video mm -hmm. in their own time and without the pressure yeah. of you being there? Yeah. So, so my question was all based on one of the things I solve people's problems is I'm able to translate their difficult offerings into videos that engage the viewer and get the message across simply, efficiently, and with emotion so people are inspired to want to work with them rather than being sold to. So yeah, okay, I get it. So you find the you problem identify you every single problem you yeah. can possibly think of yeah. and then when you go and see somebody and hopefully you've looked at their website yeah. beforehand and you've got a very good idea of the questions that you are going to ask mm -hmm. because you're pretty sure that they've got three or four problems that you could actually yeah. solve. And then it's not bashing them with ideas about your product yeah. or service and how great you are. It's sitting down, it's having a conversation, a pleasant conversation, discussing yeah. their business, asking them questions. You know what I've noticed? I do a lot of networking. Okay. And most of the people that I meet at networking meetings do the complete opposite of what you do. All they do is batter me with their stuff. And I've made the very clear, conscious decision I'm going to ask some questions and listen. And maybe we'll talk for 10 minutes. They'll talk for 80% of that time. And for the last two minutes, I will be able to come back with a killer response for everything that they've said they've got a problem with and come back. And you know what? That's working. It really is working. I'll tell you how I teach people to network. Okay. I know we're digressing slightly. And that's all fine because it's all part of the selling process yeah. and communicating. Everybody's taught to have a networking pitch. Yeah, your elevator one minute. Your elevator pitch. pitch. Yeah. And because they've been taught they've got to have one, when they go to networking, networking meetings, all they want to do is pitch everybody yeah. with this blasted yeah. one minute pitch or 20 second yeah. pitch is yeah. the yeah. perfect yeah. elevator yeah. pitch. Yeah. So what do I do? I do the complete opposite. When somebody says to me, they see my badge, hi Bruce, uh, what do you do? I say, oh, Neil, it's really boring. Tell me what you do, <laughs> which is all they wanted to do yeah. anyway. Yeah. And I asked them questions. So, you know, what's the biggest project you're working on at the moment? Who are you working with? Um, what are the biggest challenges you're having right now with that? Sounds like a really big job. And they tell me everything that I need to know so that I can sell my services to them if I want to. Because I know the problems they're having, I know the people they're working with and the problems they're having. You also know whether they can afford you or not. Absolutely. So and you may not even go down the route of talking no, to them. No, I might just excuse them and get like, off as fast yeah, as I can. Yeah. I like to be the great white shark in the room. Yeah, okay. I'm looking for the most expensively yeah, dressed yeah, or yeah, scruffily yeah, dressed, yeah, but yeah. the very expensive watch. Yeah. Um, and I'll make sure they say, hi, Bruce, what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> I, have a, I have a very, I have a couple of, responses. One of them is, I say, I make people fall in love with you and your business before they've even met you. And they go, what? How do you do that? I said, well, I need to understand about your business first before I can tell you. So I've already put a little hook in. Fantastic. But I've not told them what it is. And so I need to understand. You should be sitting in my seat now. <laughs> that's one of the things. And yeah, so that's what I do sometimes. Or I say, um, no, no, tell me about what so, you do first. So coming back to this 74%, though, because yeah. this is real key. Yeah. 74% of professional salespeople suck. 
because they don't know how to sell. Because they're trying to push a product or service yeah. on somebody. Pitch, what pitch, pitch, I'm pitch, teaching pitch. you to do right now is figure out in advance all the problems you've ever been able to solve for somebody mm -hmm. and then the questions you're going to ask to identify if that particular person you would like to sell mm -hmm. to has those problems and then it's purely a matter of chatting mm -hmm. and this comes on to the last if you remember the last part of my definition was sell of selling was helping them to buy okay which professional salespeople, amateur salespeople, call closing yes. the sale. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? But it's not closing the sale like you hear about people sitting on somebody's settee or office and they won't go away yeah. until they've got an order. This is, you summarise the problems they had, you summarise their solutions, mm -hmm. uh, your solutions, and you simply ask them, would you like some help with this? Mm -hmm. Great. So, where does the question of money, starting, contracts, all that come in? Well, that'll come in after they've agreed they want to go ahead. Right. Of yeah. course, you may have to now negotiate on price, that's and the that's the subject of the next 36 videos. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you've had an agreement. We're going to work together. We're going to yes. get on and we'll do that. Fantastic. Yeah. As always, Bruce, amazing insights, amazing whatever it is, your advice, um, and I'm sure many of us can take some of that on board and certainly make a difference to the way we are selling our businesses or not selling but creating those opportunities for people who don't know that they've got problems to come along and you solve their problems for them. Isn't that right? That's right. And you know the most important thing? When you know how to sell, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. Anybody who takes the information I give them will be able to put it into practice ever so easily and they will get phenomenal results. It's not hard. This is not rocket science. Thank you, Bruce. Amazing. Now, if you've got any questions that you feel um, a master sales trainer would be able to help you with, then drop us an email, drop us a line, put a comment in below, and we'll see if we can do our best to answer your questions. Look forward to receiving them.